This is Blue Eddy's newest lithium based battery power station designated model EP500. It's a 5.2 kilowatt hour lithium iron phosphate battery box with a built in inverter capable of 2000 watt continuous and 4800 watt surge power output. It measures 30 inches high by 12 inches wide by 23 inches deep. It weighs in at 157 pounds. The life before battery is reported to be good for 6,000 cycles. It has 412 volt AC sockets compatible with 20 amps each. On the DC side of things, it has three 12 volt, three amp outlets, two USB-A, two USB 3.0 quick charge ports, a single 100 watt USB-C, a 30 amp RB plug, and two 15 watt wireless pads. On the charge side of things, solar charging can handle up to 1200 watts with two strings of up to six panels in series. The charge controller can handle 70 to 140 volt DC. On the 8C port, the charging will max out at 600 watts. The EP500 and the EP500 Pro can both sync up their 120 volt AC outputs to a second unit and with the use of a fusion power box can both double their voltage to achieve split phase 220 volt AC and also double their power output. This feature allows you to use this as a complete home backup system capable of 4,000 watts on the EP500 and 6,000 watts on the EP500 Pro. Another first is the ability for this system to operate as a dedicated UPS or uninterruptible power supply system with the touch of a button. Network connectivity via Wi-Fi and remote controllable via a mobile app. Now all of this sounds great on paper, like all products do, but can this thing actually hit all these specs in the real world? Well, luckily, Blue Eddy sent me a pre-production unit a few weeks ago and I have been testing it to see if it lives up to spec. Okay, so first things first, let's test out charging speeds. AC charging, 560 watts. All right, let's test solar. Here we go, we have a battery as a power source. This is 140 volts, it's capable of 15 amps. It's pulling 9.5 amps, which turn into 12, uh, about 1200 watts of solar. Now, if you are to plug in the AC plug simultaneously, like I just did here, then let's see. So there we go, about 560 plus uh, 1195. That's what you can expect uh, charging rate at 86%. Now let's test battery capacity. Something this big, you are going to want to probably use it as a backup for your entire house, right? In this case, uh, I am going to power my entire building. This is a, a big commercial building. It's got a transfer switch, right? And so this allows you to disconnect from the grid and then connect for a uh, generator. This is, uh, you know, anything that you wanna power with the generator, you just flip it up. So let's turn this guy on. And I made a special cable, goes from that uh, type of connector and it goes in here and it goes through this meter so that we can record the energy that's being consumed. And then from there it goes into two of these, right? So that we can split the load. I am going to run this unit as hard as I can to see where the limits are at. And so I don't want to tax a single one of these connectors, right? So. Uh, let's uh, flip some switches. Let's put start putting some of those loads on there. There we go. This is what the setup looks like. Okay, at this point, I connected my entire commercial suite and this resulted in an average load of one kilowatt with surges of up to two kilowatts. Let's see how much energy we can squeeze out of the five kilowatt hour battery.
And that's our answer, just shy of 4.3 kilowatt hours. That comes out to 85% efficiency. Not great, not bad, just average for this type of equipment. Okay, our next test will be idle consumption. The aim is to find out how much energy the inverter weighs by just sitting there, by timing how long the battery lasts while keeping the system powered up. I started the test on a Monday at 8 p.m. By Wednesday, 8 p.m., the meter read 69% state of charge, consuming 31% of the battery in just 48 hours. It means that it used 15.5% per day. So you can expect six and a half days of battery if you leave the unit on. I was able to verify this as the unit shut itself off in the early hours of the following Monday. Okay, now it's time to test usability. Let's try a couple of tools around the shop and see if we can trip the breaker. First up, a seven inch chop saw. Next up, it's a 4,000 watt DJ sound system. All right, here we go. Finally, a 120 volt MIG welder set to max power. This welder is the tool with the highest surge that I currently own, so I will use this to test the surge capacity of the EP500. As you can see, 24 amps equals 2880 watts. Next, electric cars are becoming very popular and specifically Teslas. Let's test how many miles we can charge using the EP500. We started with 47 miles on the car. Okay, so we are an hour and 40 minutes into this test and we have gained 10 miles. 39%. And after discharging 100% of the Blue Eddy, we ended up with 65 miles for a total of 18 miles of range added to this Tesla Model 3 Standard Range Plus. Now, because I do not have two of these units, I cannot test the split phase 220 volt AC feature, but I can test the UPS mode. All right, you can find the UPS mode by going into settings, next, and then it says economy mode. Uh, you can set it in UPS mode and uh, UPS mode enable, yes. Max capacity retention, 100%. Okay, so now it's on. Okay, so I think we are on UPS mode. Okay, so the blue eddy is connected to power. And then here, we're gonna connect the lights. These big lights here, right? So let's flip that switch. Okay, so now those lights uh, are going through the Blue Eddy. Now we're going to simulate a power outage by disconnecting the Blue Eddy from the power. Yeah, the lights stay on, right? And now it's using battery power. Okay, but I see a potential problem here. You see this right now, it's set up as a UPS, but only 500 and 57 watts is coming in from the grid, but 1,046 watts is coming out to power my lights. The difference between those two, the 500 coming in and the 1,000 coming out is going to come out of the battery, even though the UPS mode is instructed to charge the, ba the battery at full state of charge and then keep it there. This will not be able 
to keep up with the load. And so that means the state of charge, which we started at 49%, is gonna keep going down until it reaches zero, at which point this unit will not be able to keep providing power to the AC load. That means that unless you connect another source of input into this, this limitation means that you will only be able to use this as a UPS without solar for loads of 600 and watts and below. Okay, turns out the folks over at Blue Eddy know of this issue and they have a software upgrade to allow you to use UPS mode on bypass, which means that while the EP500 is on UPS mode, the energy powering your loads will come directly from the grid and not from the battery inverter combo. This is great news because that's a much better UPS setup. At the time of publishing this video, I do not have that software patch. I will have to make a separate future video showing you how both the UPS feature and the Wi-Fi feature works. So stay tuned for that. Now, let's get back to the review. Now that the battery is fully depleted, we come to the best part of this review. That's right, the teardown. Alright, here we go. This is the Naked uh, EP500, right? This review is starting to be long, so I'm going to be and try to be brief here. First things that I notice, uh, aluminum and steel structure. This I like. The last Blue Eddy that I reviewed didn't have this, and I did mention that it was probably a good idea to have that. On this time around, it's about 100 pounds of battery and about 50 pounds of other electronics, this is the only way that they could get away with doing such a thing. 157, almost 160 pounds, you need a steel structure uh, or some kind of metallic structure like this. This is good news, very good news. Now let's talk about the battery. The battery seems to be four blocks, 12 volts each, so 4S. Uh, I don't know how many in parallel. They seem to be 26650s about 4,000 milliamp hours, just from what I can read through these little holes here. I don't wanna tear this unit all the way down, but seems to be 2660 is the dinner phosphate. Uh, four packs of 12, so that's 48 volts, right? Uh, and so this unit is running at 48 volts. It's got a lot of good stuff in here. You know, it's got fiberglass insulators here, big beefy bus bars, right? These are the ones that are multi-layered uh then big thick six gauge six american wire gauge um silicon wire and also an 80 amp circuit breaker here right uh then we have the bms unit right here this seems to be the bms unit this seems to be something else uh it's got fuses it's got a shunt and then a bunch of mosfets so i think this is probably the on off circuit um, or it's just another part of the BMS, but it's not the same board in here. Then that is all connected to the unit up here. And the same thing, it has a lot of the silicon uh, material, which is good because that's what you want so that it doesn't, the connectors don't rattle and come off. And so that is pretty good news. It's got, design-wise, it's pretty good. It's got a big, giant, I mean, you know, I don't know, 100 millimeter DC fan here and then uh, obviously two more on the front and so it's got that tunnel that we have on the other unit also this tunnel is bigger obviously because this is a bigger unit two kilowatt hours actually it's not that much bigger than the ac 200 right but this seems w way more beefier when it comes to the heat sinks and stuff which tells me that this will run longer periods of time on continuous mode because of that. It'll be able to keep it cooled longer and obviously 
this unit uh, with the bigger battery has to do that, right? And so also remember, this is the, the smaller version of these. There's also the EP500 Pro. I don't know if it's gonna change. It might even be the same uh, components in here. They're just, maybe it's just software stuff. So if that's the case, yeah, this seems a lot beefier than the other 2000 watt inverters that I've seen. So here is the uh, Wi-Fi thing. At the time of this review, there's only an Android version of the app. I don't have Android, so I will have to make another video in the future when they release the iOS version of the app, right? So that I can show you guys what the, the Wi-Fi controls and connectivity that this product offers, right? So there we go. Anything else? Uh, no, this unit seems pretty well designed. The plastic does seem like it's that same type of uh, rapid prototyping. It's kind of a yellowish, it, it feels brittle, it feels very light, but no doubt, just like the other models that I have been sent, once the production units come about, then the materials look a whole lot better. And no doubt that uh, we, I, we can expect to see the same thing here. So this is it. This is the EP500 naked. This is what the internals look like. Lithium iron phosphate battery. Yep, good job. I think this is gonna be pretty cool for people that want to add an easy backup system to their you know, house or building and stuff. All you have to do is just buy one of these things and install it, and then you're gonna be ready to go. All right. The Blue Eddy EP500 will be released on Kickstarter on March 23rd. I will post the link in the description when it becomes available. If you found this video helpful and you like this kind of content, first hit that like button and subscribe for more adventures with batteries. Thank you for watching and I will see you on the next one. Bye.